What are you learning inside of these programs? They all are structured a little bit different, but I would say in general, the big takeaways are, first of all, you're going to write a new piece of material and you're going to do it with professional mentorship. So this is going to be getting notes from people who give studio and network notes to real professional writers all the time, right? So it's a little bit different than your writer's group giving you notes or your friends. And it gives you a sense of what that's like when you're on staff, when you're developing to get notes from those kind of professionals. So hopefully you have a great new piece of material to help you secure representation and to go out for staffing. The programs will also prep you for staffing in terms of executives coming in and meeting with you and liking you. So they'll consider sending your name to their showrunners that they're working with who are looking for you know, new writers. Also, you get practice in how to handle meetings with showrunners, how to go through a general meeting. Because like I always tell people, when I got in the CBS program, I would have treated a showrunner meeting like a regular job interview because I had no idea what it was. It is very much not that. It is really just go in and have a conversation with someone because the truth of a meeting, a general meeting or a showrunner meeting, is that you're, they already like your writing. That's how you got in the room. So now you're there to show who you are, to be your best self, to make them laugh if you're doing a comedy, to <laughs> tell interesting stories if you're doing a drama that's you know, tied to your experience, whatever it is, and show them that basically you're a nice, normal person, you're not gonna make their life harder, and they wouldn't mind being in a room with you for 10, 12 hours a day. And that's half the trick, is just being able to go in and be relaxed and you know, do those meetings. And so that's a big element of almost every program is teaching you how to handle that, that prep and how to get ready for those meetings. What are the key benefits that TV writing programs offer? I mean, first of all, it's that, that experience of meeting some executives, meeting some managers to get practice for how to do those kind of meetings and also introductions, right? I got my first agent through an introduction from one of the programs. I got my manager through an introduction from one of the programs. So that helps you find representation if you don't have it. I met tons and tons of executives, some of whom have become close friends over the years from that, those writing programs. So you have that connection base that you start to build out. It gives you a cohort of writers to be your support system as you build your career because you need people to, you know, if something crazy happens in the room, you need someone to be like on, you know, on your break texting going, what is this craziness that just happened? Is it just me or is this crazy? And they can be like, nope, that's crazy. Just remember, take a deep breath. It's all going to be fine. <laughs> um, or to get advice on things when you're, you know, you're stuck on a, a story point and you're scared to go to the showrunner and you can have a friend who's like, no, it's better. Go ask the showrunner before you make a mistake in the script, like do it, those kind of things. And then it's also just the, the community that you start to build. I hate networking. It's like one of my least favorite words. <laughs> I used to hate when they would be like, we're having a writer's mixer and you know, I would have to go. And full disclosure, I still hate the idea of them. What has happened over the years though is that I would force myself to go. I would be like, just go for an hour. Just go for one hour and then talk to a few people and you can leave. And because I have done that, because the writing programs so often commingle and have crossover, you develop this whole network of people that you are friendly with and who you like and who are interesting to talk to. And you build this whole community. So when one of my friends becomes a showrunner and it's like, I need a great, BIPOC mid-level writer, who do you know? We all can respond to that because they just reach out to their people and then we all are like, oh, this person, this person's great. I'll, have, I'll, I'll get a script and send it to you. And we can support each other and help each other as we all grow through our careers. So that's honestly one of the most valuable things that comes out of it. And you're kind of with them for life, so to speak? A little bit, yeah. You know, it's like the my class of uh, from CBS and from NBC, we're all still in touch. We're all still very close. We, you know, celebrate each other's wins. We commiserate over our losses. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, 
It's this, your little TV family that you build. And then as you build your career, every room you go to, you're going to meet people who you want to know for the rest of your life, you know? It won't be everyone, but there's going to be people in every room that you're like, now you are stuck with me. <laughs> Do you think you would have broken into television had you not gone through one of these programs? I don't think I would have, to be honest. I think I had tried everything I could think of outside of the programs. And the one thing I had not been able to do was work as an assistant in television. And because I put myself through undergrad and graduate school and had very hefty student loans, I just couldn't afford to. I did not have the support system to allow me to make what assistants make and then also keep a roof over my head. And so that was just never going to be a, a thing I could do. And even when I tried to do it, people were like, you have a master's degree. You cannot be a PA. And I was like, no, no, I can. I really can. <laughs> Trust me, I will make it work. <laughs> and they were like, no, we're not going to. We don't believe you. So that opportunity wasn't there. And I think were it not for the programs, I'm not sure how I would have ever made it happen. I mean, I would have continued to write, certainly. Um, would it have been enough to finally get a door to open? I don't know. Had you been tempted to leave your master's degree or even your bachelor's off a of resume? So there's some survival jobs here in LA that pay some pretty good wages. Do you think they felt you were overqualified and it scared them away? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and for me, like, you know, the job that I was doing, the day job, as much as I hated it, it allowed me to survive and it allowed me to, you know, pay all my bills and pay all my loans and keep a roof over my head. And so it was just like, look, this is the way it's going to be. And, you know, it could have, there, it was that push pull of, yes, I could have taken the master's degree off my resume, but so much of what I had learned about how the business worked, I had learned because of that master's program, because this was before the writing fellowships. Right. So I was also, cutting down the sense of experience I had. So it was like, eh, you know, I'm just gonna try it and they'll say yes or they'll say no. And they always said no, but I'm still here anyway. <laughs> what advice do you have to other writers who are considering these kinds of programs? My biggest advice is, you know, when you're, when you're thinking about what to submit, whether it's a spec or a pilot, I think CBS might be the only program left, or Viacom might be the only program left that's requiring specs, uh, much to my dismay. But whatever it is you're submitting, if you were going to be identified by one piece of writing, that's the script you submit. Because you only really have that one shot. And then the next year, if you didn't get into any of them, you have to have the next script that is the script that you would want to represent you. So that's why I say you always have to be writing because you always need new material. Even once you start your career, people will have read the two samples that you broke in with. And so you have to have new samples to send out places. So, you know, always be writing. And when you get to the points in those applications where they ask you, you know, there's always either essay questions or a video element and it's like, you know, what do you have to contribute to a writer's room? Really think about what your life uniquely offers to your storytelling. It's not about how much you love TV. It's not about how you've dreamed of being a writer since you were a kid. It's about, I have gone through X, Y, and Z in my life and not trauma, just experiences you've been through. It can be that you, you lived in 17 places because your dad was in the military or that you love to hike and you've hiked seven of the craziest places in the world to hike. Whatever it is that's special about you, you want to bring out in those questions and that response because that's the stuff that people are looking for. It's like, what's the special sauce you bring into the room? Because, you know, almost everyone, and I do say almost because not a blanket statement, almost everyone who wants to be a TV writer loves TV. So it's like, why you? And that's the question you're really answering.